Hey everybody, welcome back to the next part in my creating a great tone series for our Line 6 Helix. This has actually been the first uh, video in this series that I've done in a long time, and I really don't know if I was planning on doing a whole heck of a lot more in this series as I've done so many, I don't even know off the top of my head, I'm gonna have to check later what part this is, but um, the reason I'm doing it is because in one of the forums recently, I got tagged in a post and somebody asked, if uh, myself or somebody else could do a video kind of going through and comparing some of the microphone models, at least that's I think what their question was, um, the microphone models that we have on the stock cabs and the Helix, I thought that might be a good idea. I mean, I've discussed it in previous videos and talking about the stock cabs and, and whatnot and, and in moving the mics a certain distance away um, with the distance control to get different tones and whatnot, but I don't think I ever really went in and compared a lot of the different microphones. So I'm gonna do that today. It's a bit of a strange video to make because so much of this is going to be up to personal preference and our own ideals of what tone we're looking for. And that's why these are always touchy. So I'm, I'm ne never uh, implying that there's one right or wrong answer for anything. It's just nice to have these options. But I think a lot of the problem with the Helix stock cabs that a lot of people feel and why they jump right over to IRs right away is maybe for, maybe a slight lack of understanding of what's ca what they're capable of. Now we have a lot of different cabs, but obviously in today's example, I'm just gonna stick with one cab and use the microphones as basically tone shapers. I think a lot of folks, maybe because they're not familiar with the microphones in real life, Maybe they're not familiar with what the sounds are. They shy away from them. I've had my own experience talking with, with close friends of mine where they've said stuff like, you know, I've always been afraid to try the ribbon mics. I've always been, uh, didn't know what the outcome was gonna be by using a condenser mic. So they just avoid it. And maybe they always go back to using something like the, the industry standard SM57, right? And then they say, oh, I don't really like that sound. So I'm gonna go to an IR and use it. When they could have just maybe flipped over to a different microphone and got a completely different result. So I think educating ourselves about what the microphone models are, what they they do, what the difference is between a lot of the different types of mic models we have will go a long way to helping folks maybe just dive into the stock cabs and use the microphone models we have at our disposal as the powerful tool that they really are, okay? So let's talk a little bit about that. One of the things too I see a lot of people posting questions about is where they can find out a list of like the amp models and the effects models and, and so on and so forth. A really great website that keeps getting uh, posted is helixhelp.com and I use it myself a lot as a reference, a great site. And if you go there, you will have an area where um, it talks about amp models and effects models, but it also has a whole section dedicated to mic models, okay? So we have three main types of, of uh, mic models, uh, of types of microphones, I should say, that have been modeled in our Helix. We have a whole bunch of different dynamic microphones, a whole bunch of different condenser microphones, and a, f a handful of ribbon microphones, okay? This video is not gonna go into detail about how the inner workings of all those different types of microphones um, are designed or how they work. This is gonna be just more about how they sound, okay? And no opinions uh, that I think, you know, I might give you my opinion of what I like, but it's just that, it's my opinion. Other people might disagree entirely, and that's perfectly fine and wonderful. <laughs> you know, we all have different ideals. Um, so what we have here is a list. I'm looking at Helix Help over on my other monitor here, if you see me looking over here. We have everything from Dynamics from Shure SM57s to a Sennheiser MD409, Sennheiser MD421, a Heil Sound PR30, Electrovoice RE20, AKG D112, AKG D12, which are kick drum microphones, Shure SM57, which is kind of a large vocal microphone. But these are all microphones that people have used on guitar cabinets. Uh, throughout the years with varying degrees of success depending on what it is and what sound we're going after. As far as condenser microphones go, we have an AKG C414, a Neumann KM84, which is what they consider a small diaphragm condenser microphone, which is kind of gonna be sort of a longer, you know, narrower cylinder type of a microphone, rather than something like the Neumann U67, Neumann U87, and Neumann U47, which are gonna be more large diaphragm, almost like the vocal mics you see set up in uh, shots inside of studios and what. Not, right? 
So what are the differences in the sounds between dynamics, ribbons? And a ribbon mic is really just a, a type of dynamic, dynamic mic where a very thin piece of metal is, is what vibrates to pick up the sound, right? Now, what are the, actually, what are the downsides? Let me talk about that. First, you know, a dynamic mic like a Shure SM57 is known to be the type of thing that's almost indestructible, right? That thing could fall off your truck and you can run over it a few times with it and it's probably still gonna keep working. And that's why I think you know, one of the reasons, uh, apart from that they sound really good on guitars, is that it's used so often in live situations and even in studios. Just it's, it's you know, you can almost hammer nails in with these things and they're going to keep working. So amazing microphones. Um, whereas a condenser microphone, uh, depending on the type of condenser you have, might be a little more fragile, might be a little more susceptible to humidity changes, you know. Um, they're usually going to, or almost always going to have to be phantom powered, right? They're going to have a, have a power source. Uh, so that's a bit of a drawback sometimes, right? And then the ribbon mics are much more fragile, even to the point of storing them upright so that they're not on their side. So the ribbon isn't weighing down on itself and stretching it out. Because once a ribbon stretches on a ribbon mic, the sound is uh, going to basically be ruined by it. It's not going to have the same sound as it was intended to. The other thing a lot of people don't know, and I've owned a bunch of ribbon mics. One of the nicest ones I've ever owned was the Royer R121, which we have modeled in the Helix. Uh, if you even put that onto a super loud, cranked up guitar amp very, very close, the blasts of air coming from the guitar speaker are enough to actually stretch that ribbon. So you'll see them actually using those if they're going close to a loud guitar amp with a vocal pop filter on it to kind of deflect the wind and the air away from the, uh, the ribbon. So just crazy stuff like that that maybe a lot of folks don't realize. The beauty of having all of these in our Helix, we don't have to worry about any of that. We can get those tones uh, we can put, you know, a Royer 121 ribbon in front of a raging uh, cranked up Marshall Plexi and not have to worry about that, right? And that's the other thing about a ribbon mic, you know. Uh, I think Royer used to offer, I don't know if they still do, a free, the first re-ribboning for free, right? Because what happens over time is if, if a vocalist who's breathing really heavy into it, right, or blowing a lot of wind into it, it could stretch the ribbon and the ribbon has to be replaced. So all sorts of headaches we might have to deal with in the real world that we don't have to in the Helix. All right, so there's one really cool thing I wanted to talk about first and foremost. If anybody wants to find out more about the inner workings of these microphones and the acoustic qualities of them without having to listen to them first, there's a couple cool things we can do. You can simply Google nowadays, um, you know, condenser versus urban versus dynamic mic, and it'll explain to you all the different inner workings of these microphones and what the actual uh, technical differences are between them. I don't want to get into that right now. But a really cool site is a site called Recording Hacks, okay, recordinghacks.com. And let's just go over to the screen here for a second. The Recording Hacks website has a microphone database, which is really cool. And what's really cool about it is that they give the frequency response charts of the microphone so we can kind of see what the difference are. So let's take a look at some of these. Look at the massive list here. We can go to something like a Sh the Shure mics and look how they have them all listed with pictures here. So some of the ones that we have, right, we have uh, not the Beta 57, but we have the Shure SM57, right? We have the Shure SM7, which I'm not sure if that's, let's say yeah, SM7B right here. Um, let's take a look at the Shure SM57 for a second. So what's really neat about this is that we can scroll down to the bottom and it gives us frequency response graphs. So here is a picture of the frequency response of the Shure SM57. So what we see here is basically right below 200 Hertz, all the low end frequency starts to get rolled off, okay? A lot of people like to roll that off on guitars to begin with, right? So this microphone kind of does that for us. And it also gives us a boost starting up here around four kilohertz, almost up around six dB up here in the five kilohertz range and it stays boosted well past the 10 kilohertz up into 11, 12 kilohertz and then a big drop off at a point where we don't really care about it for guitar anyways. So that gives you kind of, and it's very flat through all the uh, mid-range, low mids and, and, uh, and mid-range frequencies. So that gives us a bit of a visual representation of what that microphone's gonna sound like. So let's sort of keep that in mind. Let's go back to something like another famous mic, a Royer 121. 
Okay, so here's Aurora Labs R121 right here. We'll click on that and we'll see if they have um, their graph here. Uh, you know what they have here, I believe. Uh, where are our specs? Oh, I'm sorry, here we go up on the side. This one's a little different for some reason, but they have a cut sheet here. Let's download that and take a look. And here's our frequency response here. Now, if we compare that to the SM57 we just looked at, there's a bit of a, a, a frequency dip from just below 100 hertz, maybe by you know two to three dB, all the way up to about 1,000 hertz. So it gets rid of some of those muddy frequencies. But if you look at here, the, the, the SM57 started rolling off right around here, all the low end. So it's gonna be much more low end information, which we can choose to keep in or roll out with, with EQ filters later on. But this low end is what actually gives the ribbon mic uh, some of its really nice quality in my opinion, right? It gives a very nice low end to it that I love on guitars and I can just roll off what I don't want, right? But it's there if I need it. A very slight but fairly flat boost starting maybe around two kilohertz and staying fairly flat, right? And then a nice gentle roll off starting around 10 kilohertz um, where the highs are a little more subdued. So we can just see visually how much different the Royer R121 frequency response is gonna to be to something like the SM57, right? So pretty interesting to see how these look visually and it gives us an idea before we even put the mic up as to what we're gonna be dealing with sonically, right? So let's now maybe go to something like a Neumann and we have what? We have the U6787 and I believe 47 inside of our Helix, right? So let's just pick the Neumann U67 and see if they have a frequency response chart for that. Now these have different polar patterns, meaning they can pick up omnidirectional, so all the sounds around the microphone are cardioid more in that heart-shaped pickup pattern. Let's just go with cardioid since that's what the other microphone uh, pickup pattern, actually no, the R121 I believe is a figure eight pickup pattern. But anyways, let's just look at the cardioid, that's the same as the SM57. If you notice, a much flatter frequency response on a Neumann U67. Look at the low end, it stays very flat, doesn't roll off unless we engage the uh, built-in uh, low cut switch that's on it. Um, very flat, little slight dip in the very low mids to lows, very flat and a slight, slight boost of only a dB or two up maybe starting around what, six kilohertz up to maybe 10 kilohertz and then a gentle roll off, right? So it's gonna be more similar, let's say to the ribbon mic, right? Where, but the lows roll off a little sooner whereas the ribbons almost have like an accentuated low end or at least the Royer R121, right? Um, and a little more brightness in the high end. So pretty interesting to see this visually, right? Uh, let's take a look at one more mic here. I've zoomed in pretty far, whoops, there we go. Um, let's take a look at the Coles uh, 4038, which is another ribbon mic that we have in the Helix. And we look again, there's really no roll off in the low end, right? Goes all the way down, there's almost like a boosted low end. Look at all through here, through these lower mids, it's boosted, right? And that's what gives that, that almost Th that thickness and almost muddiness to that microphone. But a little bit of a boost up in the upper mids and a, and a big roll off right here starting on the highs. So as we see, we'll see in our, our audio examples here, you'll sort of see how these actually turn out sounding and how, how great a job Line 6 has done modeling these. These are fabulous. And from somebody who has actually used um, a lot of these mics in real life, I've owned a 121, uh, I, it, the, the models in the Helix are, are really great, really, really wonderful and give the same characteristics, okay? So let's go over to our uh, HX edit and take a look at what I've done. I, I put a bit of work into this with some comparisons. I, I did, um, I set up three presets, one for all the dynamic mics, one for all the condenser mics, one for all of the ribbon mics. One for a comparison between the SM57 and the Royer R121, and then just another general mic comparison comparing dynamic condenser and ribbon and hearing the differences, okay? So let's start with the dynamic mics. What I did for all of these is I just set up an amp, the Brit Plexi Norm, cranked the drive to 10, bass is on zero, mids on 10, treble on 10, presence on 10, channel volume of 5.5, masters at 10. I used one of my favorite cabinets, the 412 Greenback 25, 
little tiny bit of verb and my normal little studio comp at the end. So nothing complicated. But what's going to be important here is that I've set up all these snapshots. So for the dynamic mic ones, I've set up uh, one with the Shure SM57, one with the uh, Sennheiser 421, the Sennheiser 409, the Heil PR30, the Electrovoice RA20, the AKG D112, AKG D12, and another one with the SM7. So this is all of the dynamic mics. We're going to be able to hear them and compare them. And this is something you guys can do. Obviously, I can't put all combinations and all possibilities together here. We'll be here for four hours, right? And nobody wants to hear me talk that long, uh, as I've been told many times on YouTube, by the way. Thank you guys so much for that <laughs> sarcasm. Um, anyways, uh, so I'm going to get by using the snapshots, it's going to allow us to be very, a very simple way to be able to compare the sounds of these and pick our favorites. And I think a big part of crafting tones on our Helix is knowledge. Um, knowledge of what the sounds of a certain mic is going to do for us before we even put it on. That way we don't have to, you know, we might have to go through and compare the first time, but once we've educated ourselves to the sounds of these mics, we can kind of make mental notes of what our favorites are and mental notes of what each mic sounds like so that when we're looking for a particular sound, we're gonna be able to just guide ourselves to the proper mic, you know, almost instantaneously and be up and running much quicker, you know? Is it, is it a dynamic mic sound we want or is it a ribbon mic sound we want? No, it's a dynamic mic sound. Okay, well, which dynamic mic? Okay, in my period experience, I like the 421 over the SM57, or I like the 409 over the 421, and we can get there a lot quicker. So this is a really neat exercise, and I think I'll try to put these up on Custom Tone, or at least make these downloads available for people who do want to sit and do this test at home and really dive into it with their own guitars and their own monitoring system to educate themselves further, or educate their ears further on what each microphone basically sounds like. So hopefully that makes sense. But again, like I said, I'm not gonna be able to exhaust everything here. So let's start off here. What I've done, let's just flip through this. The only changes you're gonna see are the microphone. Uh, and, and sometimes I, I know in some of these, I can't remember exactly where, but I changed the level just to, I tr always try to keep the level at, at, a, at a similar volume or almost the same volume so we can hear the characteristics of the tone changing, not just the volume level fooling us into thinking the characteristics of the tone are changing, if that makes sense. So as I switch through, I went to the next snapshot, it's the 421 dynamic, then it goes to the 409 dynamic, goes to the PR30, to the Electrovoice RE20, to the AKG D112, D12, and SM50, or SM7, sorry. So let's hear how these sound. I'll just noodle around playing some riffs here and I'll switch through these and just watch up here. I've labeled the snapshot names as the different mics uh, with the, the, the brand that they are and the type of mic, but I've all, you can also just look right here to see the actual models changing as well. So let's start with the industry standard SM57. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's go to the 421. Okay, let's go to the Sennheiser 409. The Heil PR30. Lecture Voice RE20. AKG D112. AKG D12. and the Shure SM7. All right, 
Let me just noodle around and switch through these as I continue playing so you can kind of hear it a little more seamless. <laughs> What do you guys think? I think you'll see that there is a huge, huge tone difference just by switching microphones. We haven't changed speaker cabinets, we haven't changed settings on our amp, we've just changed microphones. And it's like this, you know, sort of preset new EQ filter every time we do that. So if we figure out which ones we like and which ones we don't, you know, we can narrow it down to maybe having a handful of our favorite microphones that we're sort of pre-educated to know what they're gonna sound like for a particular tone, and we just throw them in and we know kind of where we are uh, before we even get started, if that makes sense. So that's how I kind of approach this, and it allows me to dial my tones in much faster and uh, get myself where I wanna be very quickly. So what are some of the favorites? Well, you know, having said, talking about the SM57 being such an industry standard, I actually really don't like that mic, and it's not really a go-to mic of mine. I will use it when I, Here's something in a tone I'm trying to recreate that needs that, I'll go to it, but I almost never use it for something I'm creating on my own. Okay, so it has something in the high end I don't like. Keep in mind too, I haven't done any high or low cut, uh, low roll offs on these at all, which I normally would do, but I didn't want to do that to take away from just the characteristics of the mic. We can always add those in later if we so desire, but for this video, I chose not to. So what would I do instead of a 57 for a dynamic mic? Or, um, I might go with something like a Sennheiser 409. So let's listen to the difference between those two. Here's a 57. Here's a 409. You can always watch up on the screen to see which one I'm on at any given time, okay? Um, yeah, so I like the 409 better. It's a smoother tone to it. Now, some folks might say, well, the, the SM57 might cut better in the mix, and it might, but it's got a little graininess that I'm not crazy about. Again, these are just my opinions. Doesn't, you know, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't use a 57. Some folks might really like it, and a lot of amazing classic guitar tones have been recorded with that. But there's things I can do when I get a starting point like the 409 where I like it a little bit better. Later, I can maybe use my split crossover or you know, a high shelf EQ like we have coming in 2.8 to maybe boost the highs a little bit, and it's going to sound you know, maybe a little bit better. It's gonna retain some of the qualities of the 409 I like, but just brighten it up a bit. Or I can move that microphone back a bit to, to, to you know, bring the low end down. The thing with a lot of cardioid mics, uh, which a lot of these are, is that you're going to get a lot of proximity effect uh, to the microphone. You might say, well, what is proximity effect? Well, proximity effect is, Similar to what a uh, radio DJ uses to get that big boominess to his voice. They talk very close to the microphone. And what happens is when we come in very close proximity to a microphone, um, the low end is accentuated. There's a fullness to it, okay? So if there's too much of a fullness to any of our, our tones with a particular microphone, by rolling the distance control back, we can sort of roll those lows off. So let's hear that on the 409. Now 
now we can compare that to the 57. All of a sudden the 409 doesn't sound quite as dark, right? So it's still got the nicer high end, but we've controlled the low end just by rolling it back maybe two, three, four inches, right? Wherever we want it to be. So that's kind of interesting. Um, what else is there? Well, you know, something like the AKG D112 and D12, those are kick drum microphones. So a D1, D, the D12, which is the older of the AKG kick drum mics, has a very different sound for electric guitar. <laughs> The D112 is a little bit better than that, I find. Okay, I actually like the SM7 a lot as well. Retains a nice bottom end to it. Okay, so that's a quick overview of our dynamic mics. What do you guys think? Hopefully that kind of helps you to be able to compare these and sort of, you know, pick your favorites in advance of ever, uh, you know, dialing in our tone, but such a powerful tool. Okay, let's jump over to our condenser mics. There's fewer models. Uh, there's only five of them, four of them being Neumann type mics. Like I mentioned, the U47, U87, U67 are all large diaphragm condensers, meaning the uh, the diaphragm in them that picks up the the, uh, the sound basically uh, is is going to be larger, whereas the KM84 is going to be a smaller one. The AKG414, I believe, is kind of more of a, a midsize, but don't quote me on that. I think it's a little bit smaller a diaphragm than some of the Neumann ones, but again, don't quote me on that. I'm just kind of going by my memory. I haven't used these mics in a long time. So let's, as we saw in our frequency response charts at the beginning of the video, we noticed that compared to like, let's say an SM57, the low end is going to be extended out a little bit more. Uh, it's gonna be an overall flatter frequency response. The high end is probably gonna be extended out with less of a roll off as well. So let's see how that sounds, okay? We may get a little bit more of a darker sound because of the extended low end, right? Until we decide to roll that off. We may also find a nicer, smoother high end to these where it doesn't have that graininess of a dynamic mic. So if we understand that, then we could have a nicer, smoother, fatter tone, right? If we low, roll some lows off, we might have a nice, smooth high end maybe almost kind of between, you know, a ribbon and a dynamic in a sense, kind of best of both worlds maybe. Anyways, let's try it out. Here's the AKG 414. <laughs> I'm in U67. No, I'm in U87. And finally, Neumann U47. Okay, so what's the difference? Well, the, the, of all of these, I think the 414 is probably my least favorite. Maybe a little bit too dark. But again, nothing that can't be, you know, tweaked with EQ. The KM84 is not bad. Notice how it would probably require less EQ than the 414. It just kind of is, seems more balanced across the frequency spectrum to me. Like it would cut in the mix better right away. Then we go into the larger diaphragm condenser mics and for, for my ear, the low end gets a little bit sweeter sounding, right? Compared to the KM84. So here's the U67. Let's go to the 
U87. And the U47. Think of all of those, I like the U47 the best. Sounds nice just as is, and if we were to decide to maybe roll it back a couple inches, it might just tighten that bottom end up a little bit. If it was sounding too fat in the mix, all right? So that's our condenser mics. Hope you guys like those. And now let's go to our ribbon mics. Now, these are the mics that I find most folks are just deathly afraid of right away because they don't sound... Uh, let me put it this way. If you're not used to hearing the sound of a ribbon mic, it's going to be kind of shocking. It's going to sound very muddy, very woolly sounding maybe, right? It's going to sound like it needs some work. The beautiful part about ribbon mics is that they handle EQ beautifully. Really, really nice, okay? Um, there, we can, we can add a lot of upper mids to them and, and, and roll off some lows and they retain a real nice non-harsh quality to them in the upper end, which is what's so beautiful about it. So you can add a lot of EQ and you almost have to, or you can pull the distance back on them. And I got a couple interesting examples. Let's just listen to the sound of these various mics. So first is the Royer R121, all right? Uh, so that's gonna sound like this. Here's the Bayer Dynamic M160. And the real shocker, the Coles 4038. There's something really great about the 4038 and really awful all at the same time. I love the low end on it. It's just beautiful. But it's too much and too boomy, right? So the work has to be done on it, but it's, it's not a mic that, mo that you should just write off right away and say, no, I'm not using that. It's a really great, great mic model. Um, but it does need some help along the way. So something I've done here, if you notice in these other snapshots, is I have done the Royer 121, the Bayer 160, and the Colts 4038 seven inches back. So if I go to these snapshots, you'll notice it's the same, same thing. And what I've done is I've balanced the level on them so that the level stays the same because when we pull the mic models back, uh, we lose some volume as it, as it would be in the real world. Okay, so let's compare these. Here's the Royer 121, one inch back like we just heard, and then I'm gonna switch between that and seven inches back and you'll see how much more usable it becomes almost instantly. So here's, uh, watch on the screen as I switch between them. You'll notice just by rolling it back seven inches, we've tamed that low end, which gives a little more brilliance to the high end, but it keeps that sweetness in the high end too, where it's not harsh and biting. Let's try that with the Bayer 160. The Bayer 160, I find, is the most usable right out of the box. It has a, a little sweeter high end with a little less lows to it. Seven inches back. 
So just by rolling these mics back seven inches, it's amazing. It's like EQing the mic again uh, instantly with very little work, right? So let's go back to that really out of control low end on the 4038. <laughs> Okay, let's pull that back seven inches. What happens if we go back 12 inches with that? I really like that mic. And then again, we can come in and help that out with a little bit of EQ after the fact. As anybody who's watched my videos, you'll probably have noticed that I really gravitate towards using the ribbon mics. I love them. They're just amazing. They just sound so good, you know? Um, and they allow me to be able to tweak things with some EQ and get, get where I want to be. So I'll go with those a lot of times, unless I'm using something specifically that needs a dynamic mic or condenser mic, you know, that just right off the bat, it's, it's just gonna get me there faster. But for my own tones, I really gravitate towards ribbons. So let's start comparing a couple of the different types of mics. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare the Shure SM57 to the Royer 121. And there's a few different comparisons here I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do just the 57 as we were used to seeing it um, in our uh, previous examples at one inch back. Then I'm going to do the 121 just at one inch back, just so you can hear the difference between the 57 and the 121. Then I'm going to do the 121 nine inches back, okay? And then I'm going to do the 121 nine inches back with a split crossover being added in, boosting all the frequencies above 650 hertz by two and a half dB, okay? So we'll see on, on this one here, that shuts off. Right, it's off, this book crossover is off through all of these except on that last one, okay? So here's just a little bit of the 57. Here's the 121 with no alterations. Huge difference, big bottom end on the uh, 121, right? So let's go back and forth while I play that. Now let's pull the 121 back nine inches. Let's compare the 121 one inch back to the 121 nine inches back, okay? Now let's compare the SM57 to the 121 nine inches back. Here's the SM57. Do you see how much pulling the mic back nine inches how, how much more similar it made it to the SM57, but in my opinion, still with a nicer bottom end and a sweeter top end that wasn't so bright and piercing. Here on the 57, there's a brittle harshness to the high end. which I find smooths out with the 121. Now what happens if we add that split crossover? And so here's the 121 nine inches back, no split crossover, and I'll switch to it with the split crossover, boosting all the frequencies, uh, what was it, two and a half dB above 650 hertz. Here's the difference there.
much nicer now. Let's compare that to the SN57. So here's a 57. about you guys, but it brings it in the same ballpark, but there's still something nicer in the high end when I'm using the 121, pulled back nine inches, or maybe seven inches, or whatever you want, right? And uh, with a little maybe high shelf EQ, and it really smooths all of that out. So it, it's something I prefer over the SM57. So hopefully that comparison opens up your eyes a bit. All right, let's do one final comparison as this video is getting nice and long. Um, here's one where I just took the SM57, the Royer 121 pulled back six and a half dB, and then the U67 at one inch as well, just to hear the difference between, you know, ribbon mic, SM57, and one of the more popular uh, Neumann mics. So here's our SM57. <laughs> Twenty-one pulled back six and a half inches. Neumann U67. I'll play a bit and switch between them. So you can hear some of those crazy high notes and it's crazy. Now again, you know, I didn't do any clean sounds in this video. I'm sure somebody will comment on that and give me crap for not. Um, <laughs> again, there's only so much I can cover here. Do your own comparisons, right? Get Set something up like this, um, change it to a clean sound, do your own comparisons, right? I'm just trying to give you ideas to set you off in the right direction um, to, to start just basically educating our ears um, so we know what the microphones are gonna do before we even put them up, right? So we can get to our final outcome faster and maybe not feel like we have to jump into IRs right away, right? The stock cabs are really great. And again, I'm just using one cabinet, right? We have all these other cabinets available with all the same mic choices, right? So really handy. I hope that was of some help, guys. It was more just a discussion about the microphones to, to maybe spark some ideas for you guys to try and to uh, be a little better educated maybe before you go into it, so, um, knowing what the different mics are going to do. All right. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and listening to me for so long, ramble on. Um, I, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope that helps a, a few folks, okay? Like I said, I'm gonna try to make these available for download. I don't know if I'll put them on custom tone or just set up some links that you guys can grab them at. Uh, one way or the other though, if you guys wanna import them into your Helix and mess around with them, like I said, try them with clean sounds or whatever, so. All right guys, thanks so much. Uh, please share the video, like the video, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I really appreciate you guys tuning in and all the support and kind words that uh, I receive from you guys. It makes it all worthwhile and I hope it's helping some folks out to uh, 
be able to dial in better tones on their own, all right? I also have a bunch of stuff available on Line 6 Marketplace. If you guys wanna show your support for, for this stuff, it helps me to keep doing what I'm doing. Um, so they're up there, and I hope you guys enjoy those as well. All right, thanks so much for tuning in, and I will be back soon with some more content, and ciao for now. Take care.